Hey guys, it's Mike here. I wanted to continue the conversation about how to do syntax searching in Logos Bible software. In this video, we're going to focus on how someone interested in building syntax queries can begin this process by understanding how the databases work through learning how to read syntax graphs. This will be made possible by learning which resources in our library we need to consult, followed by an example of a syntax graph and how we read it. For Hebrew, the options for syntax searching are pretty simple. It is Anderson Forbes, database, or bust. To begin the process of doing serious Hebrew syntax searching, becoming familiar with the resources needed to search this database is a must. You don't have to memorize every little bit about the database, but you should be at least familiar and capable of referencing back to these resources when you have a question or concern. The first resource you need to be familiar with is the Hebrew Bible Anderson Forbes Phrase Marker Analysis. This is needed for learning how to actually build a syntax search as it visually represents the overall structure of how the syntax database operates. We'll cover how to properly read this graph in just a bit. The second resource you must be familiar with is a systematic glossary to the Anderson Forbes Analysis of the Hebrew Bible. This resource is extremely helpful in defining key terminology that is used by Anderson Forbes when they built their database. For instance, one of the key terms that you'll need to be familiar with is a clause immediate constituent, or kick. You can open the glossary to get a full rundown on the function and meaning of this term. For Greek searching, the menu is a bit more robust. For this video series on syntax searching, I'm only going to be focusing on two of the available Greek syntax databases used in Logos. These are the Open Text Database and the Cascadia Database. Just as was true about the Anderson Forbes Hebrew Syntax Database, these two Greek databases also come with their very own clausal outlines and glossary of terms. For the Open Text Database, you'll want to locate the opentext.org syntactically analyzed Greek New Testament clause analysis as well as the opentext.org syntactically analyzed Greek New Testament glossary. For the Cascadia database, you'll need the Cascadia Syntax Graphs of the New Testament SBL edition and Cascadia Syntax Graphs of the New Testament glossary. While it's ideal to learn both syntax languages in Greek, realistically set a goal to learn just one. My preferred database to use is Cascadia for various reasons that I don't have time to go into right now, but if you want a recommendation, go with that one. The next step, once we've familiarized ourselves with an overview of the different databases, is to actually begin to analyze the database itself. Since this video is working as an overview, we're going to ignore the nuances between the different databases for right now and look more generally at the practice of reading a syntax graph. All three databases function in much the same way. Because of this, we're going to reserve ourselves to looking at the Anderson Forbes database as the overview of how to read all syntax graphs. I'm going to get started by opening up the Anderson Forbes phrase marker analysis by going up to the command bar and typing the name Anderson. Keep in mind that this is Anderson with an EN on the end as opposed to an ON. Let's make this panel take up the whole layout so it will have optimal viewing experience. Then turn the phrase analysis to Genesis 15.6. A syntax graph runs in two directions. First, it runs from the top to bottom on the far right hand side. This represents the word order of the text as represented in the Hebrew text that we normally read. If we open the Anderson Forbes Analyze Text, or AFOT for short, by going up to the command bar and typing AFOT, we will see the regular Hebrew format we are used to. The graph also runs left to right or right to left. The far right represents the word level of the text, and the farther left you move, the higher the level of syntactical relationship represented. Let's take a closer look. Genesis 15.6 is a rather simple syntactical structure, which is one of the reasons why it's a good place to start. Notice that we have the word level on the right-hand side. The next syntactical level represented here is the phrase level, represented by the prepositional phrase, by Yahweh. 
This prepositional phrase is split out into two component parts, the preposition be and the object of the preposition Yahweh. The next level up from this is the clause immediate constituent or kick level. Once again, take special note of this level because these will be used to build Hebrew syntax queries over and over again. This level represents the major building blocks of any Hebrew clause. This includes things like subject, object, and direct object. These are many of the syntactical terms that we are used to seeing. The final level represented in this verse is the clausal level. This is a pretty simple syntactical structure. If we scroll down just one more verse, there we see quite a bit more complexity represented. We're not going to tackle that quite yet. Let's look again at Genesis 15.6. This verse is composed of two clauses. The second clause has a clause immediate constituent called beneficiary. If we don't remember what this means, we can open the database glossary for a refresher. Go to the command bar and type Anderson, once again with an EN on the end as opposed to an O end, and select the glossary from the dropdown. We can find the entry for beneficiary by pressing Command F on a Mac or Control F on Windows to run a quick search of the panel. Type beneficiary and hit enter. Here we see that it is found in the section of semantic roles. It is defined as a clause immediate constituent that refers to the recipient of a beneficial action. If we were to break verse 6b down, we see that the verbal idea of chashav or reckoned with an implicit subject Yahweh. The direct object is represented by the suffix pronoun ha with an appositional complement that further describes this object, sadaka. Pretty much all of the syntactical databases operate and are read in this fashion. Obviously, there are going to be nuances to each different database that will slightly affect the way that we read it, but we have at least a common starting point for moving forward. In the next video, we're going to begin the process of building a custom syntax query at the word level. We'll focus that video on doing a Hebrew query with the following video looking at a Greek query. If you have any questions up to this point, please leave them for me in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you can be alerted when the next video is made available. As always, enjoy mining the depths of the scriptures with Logos. Until next time.